okay? Who says it's sexual? All right. Okay, let's listen from those that think it's asexual and then after it's sexual. Okay, Iman, uh, you say asexual. Okay, why asexual? Okay, does that involve another plant? It's like just one parent, right? Okay, fair enough. It kind of fits the bill. Okay, now you say sexual. That's why as you see, right? Okay, why both of y'all say sexual <laughs> reproduction? <laughs> because if there's a sperm and an egg, that means you need both of the cells to be able to fuse to form the resulting uh, cell. Okay. Same for the same reason, okay? Uh, for both of them, they say that okay, there's a sperm and an egg involved. Okay? There's a male and a female that meet involved, fused together to form a cyborg. So, which one? Uh, okay, sexual, uh. okay, sexual reproduction. Okay, so, what does this mean? Uh, the better definition of sexual or asexual, you want to look at whether there are two different gametes involved. Okay? Don't think about parents all the time because in the case of plants sometimes the parents there are no parents sometimes in plants yeah, okay so i say again uh, in plants this line is not so clear uh, you really want to go back down to whether a male gamete and a female gamete is involved so actually in this case uh, it's sexual in nature also okay even though it's one parent Okay, what about fungi? What about? Uh, from my understanding, both fungi can carry out both sexual and asexual. I don't understand the life cycle completely, but I recall that they have a stage in life where they reproduce asexually, where all the spores they produce are clones. Then there's another stage in their life where their spores they produce are uh, non-identical, formed by a meiosis. Yeah, so I think they have two stages in their life. So can plants go through asexual reproduction? And, okay, and I think you learned this maybe from this before. If I were to, let's say, cut a, maybe I cut a bud over here, just cut it off, then I put it into the soil, a new roots may start developing. This plant that grows out, right, that's an like identical from the original plant. That would have been asexual in nature. No sperm and egg involved. I just took a part of this plant and started planting it. And I'm sure you've experienced it for some plant, maybe like money plant, you know. Yeah. Okay? So I think the best, better definition would be you want to look for male and female gametes, and that's sexual in nature. I would think nature has developed these two methods because of the conditions they live in. Because each one has their plus and minus. Some asexual can be really fast, can produce a lot in one go. It could be useful in an environment where it doesn't change that much. It's okay to have many clones of yourself. But let's say you know now in times of COVID, right? Think about it. If all of us are genetically identical, all of us are weak, one COVID come on, everyone will be wiped out. The only reason that human population sustains onwards is because all of us are slightly different in some way, immune system different in some way, and we are we have different levels of, of immunity. Yeah. So sexual reproduction will allow for that, this variety. Right? Uh, that doesn't mean the concept like plants don't have genders. Oh, oh yeah, okay, so do plants have genders? If like you okay, one flower already got male and female parts, right? I would say in, in, a, in the case of plants, it's hard to say whether they have a gender or not. However, you can say that they have male parts or female parts. If let's say one plant has only male flowers, which are which actually have birds, then I can say that that's a male plant. Yeah. Yes? Because actually papaya is actually female. Correct. Okay, so right, let's notice, actually papaya plant, we go to papaya plant, you can find one plant that uh, only has male flowers. That means the flowers only have antlers, no? Go to, sorry? Cucumber. Cucumber? Really? Uh, cucumber? Yeah. Okay, I'm not sure, but okay, I can trust you. Uh. 
Okay, then uh, if you go to another plant, it may only have the female parts, the ovary and the stigma. Then you can say it has gender. Okay? So uh, let's look at these examples. You have a question? Okay, then let's look at these examples. Let's look at the starfish. What do you think? Do you think it's sexual or asexual recur in nature? I don't want some evidence for it. It's split. It's like a plant, cow, It's gun, yes, you have something. What do you think? Do you think it's sexual or asexual? Why asexual? Okay, they look kind of same, look kind of genetically identical. Um, if we read the paragraph below, it provides you a little bit more clue as to whether this is asexual or sexual. Some species of starfish are able to grow new and prior organisms from fragments of themselves. The new organisms are genetically identical from the original parent. Okay, uh, this is actually a form of asexual reproduction. Okay, I'm going a bit fast here so that we can talk about structures of human reproduction. Okay? Because um, I'm not gonna, we are not going to assess you in depth in this part. Okay? This is more of an introduction. If we look at bees and ants, you know bees and ants are very interesting. They have a way of reproducing called parthenogenesis. What do you think? Do you think this is a form of asexual or sexual repro? Some ants and bees are capable of producing eggs. They are deployed. Already have two ends of chromosomes inside. These eggs are only fertilization, just grow up into a new bee or a new ant. Do you think this is sexual or asexual? Asexual. Okay, it's asexual. Again, no fertilization involved. Asexual. Alright, so to me, uh, is, uh, to me the, the better way of defining sexual and asexual is really down to whether you require a male or female or a male. I mean, you've seen ants and bees, how their colonies can be so large. Sometimes to achieve such a large size, they do so uh, by just producing eggs that are only fertilization. And it can just hatch and then go on to find the eggs. Last but not least, is the flat worm. Okay? I'm going to show you a video in a while. It's quite interesting to watch. This particular flat worm, it says it's a hermaphrodite. That means it has both male and female reproductive yeah. organs on itself. Do you think this is a form of sexual or asexual reproduction taking place? Yeah, the flatworm has both male and female organs. It means it has both penis and ovaries and all the female parts and all the male parts. <laughs> okay, you think it's sexual or asexual? Sexual? Okay, it's not what you think, it's not like one flat one day, like, like. And it cannot, no, it cannot self mate, yeah? But if you have two flat ones coming together, that's how you decide who's going to be the male or female, yeah? Both have male or female parts, right? How? Okay, this is how they do it, they fight it out. What? Yeah, they fight. They fight. They fight. Okay, so here are two flat ones coming up to each other. They have both male and female parts. And then they'll fight. Okay, so each flat one has two 
in a sense. So they will fight. They will see the one that managed to choke the other first, right, will become the male. Correct. So uh, what you do now is you fight. The one that manages to book first, the other one, right? Then, then the winner will become the male. Then the loser will have to carry the baby. Why do you have two? Well, this is a very tough question. Unless the sperm... They see this useless male fly away already. Then the female will have to carry the... the... the zygotes. But why do they fight? Okay, because if you think about it, right? At least in the animal kingdom, no? correct, they do want to pass on their genes, right? Um, but if you think about it, between the male and the female, right, who tries carrying the babies? The female. Actually, the female that creates babies, well, it's a very resource intensive process. And so, therefore, in this case, the, they, they fight it out, right? Because if you lose, then you have to carry the baby for a good period of time. Well, this male just goes on and find some more to fight with. Yeah? Oh, do their gender get, get fixed after this fight? No, it's not fixed. They have both organs. So if they lose, then then you have to carry the baby for a while. Okay, I do not know if I'm carrying a baby, they can do it all the time. I have no idea, but... Okay, so but what's my point here? You see again, huh? Here we have one organism that both male and female parts. It does not mean that it will by itself can grow up sexual. Right? You still need two individuals, different male and female can needs, fertilize and you get cycle. Okay? Why do we spend why do we spend this time talking about difference between sexual and asexual? Because I would like you to know from this point onwards, I'm gonna focus on sexual, not the asexual part. Yeah? Okay, because asexual is actually quite easy. If I look at a plant, chop out one plant, put in the spot, and then it grows more. But when we talk about sexual, then there are parts involved. Uh, we want to look at where the organs that will produce the different gametes. So right now, in the remaining lesson, we're going to look at the structures of the human repro system. May I get everyone? Okay, I think right, it will do you good if you have two different virtual diagrams. The first diagram you can look at, if you go to Google Classroom, okay, you will be able to find that I put a link, human repo structures. If you were to click on that, you'll be brought to this page. This page will show you the 3D model of the human and the male and female repo system. Okay, a cross section of it. Okay, you have that link. So that's a, okay, it's a bit different, huh? Because the one I provided on Lumos is a slice is half. <laughs> but the one provided on SLS, you will see it's not slice in half. You look at it from an external point of view. But I want to look at both so that you have a better understanding, yeah? You can screenshot this, tuck it into your OneNote, and then you can label and write information from there onwards. Okay, do I require you to submit this on SOS? Don't need Okay, you, you make notes, I think that's more important. Okay? So you spend this time as you label up, after that put it in your notes. Your notes shows you a 2D version of the cross section that you cannot move around and have a look from different perspectives, yeah?
Okay, feel free to rotate the model in all directions so that you can look at it um, from different perspectives. Okay, let's start with the mail repro system. There are actually a lot more parts to label for the mail repro system. Okay, so I'll run through the various parts, and you see if your, you and your friends can identify along the way. Huh? Okay, first and foremost, for the mail repro system, does everyone have a screenshot ready to label? Okay. Fair enough. <laughs> or you can label it later up to you. Just have a way of taking down some notes. Huh? Okay, first and foremost, warm up. Huh? Please label the penis. You know where it is? Yeah. 
Yeah, I once again, I don't need you to know this in depth. Right, it's just an introduction to the structures. And that's about it to the memory productive system. Okay, so what's in it for you? What is more important for you to know is this. Do you know you can trace the path that sperm takes out of the male repo system? Okay? Okay, that's what's important. I say again, uh, what's really important for this is can you trace the path that sperm takes out of the human repo system? Or the male repo system? If you do a quick trace, it should go out of the sperm, eh, sorry, it should go out of the testicles, the epididemis, the past deferents, go through all the different glands, finally out through the urethra. Right? And that is the main thing you should know for the male repo system. Yeah, I do not really need you to, to know the structures, you know, the function of the structures in depth.
he has to do with uh, little in inflatable pouches. If you look at it, uh, can you see various segments over here? These can be filled with blood. When it's filled with blood, then it will become solid. It's like you blow a balloon, right? With air, it will stay in the solid. Okay, you all laugh so much, I don't understand why. I think she's same thing of 4 7 is very serious on it. Ah. <laughs> 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 four seven very serious. Eh? I even say after you go to the then it's not like you can make shakes out of it. It's not like you can make Okay, can you touch up? Okay, because I'm going to now do a quick recap of the female repro system. Next week, we're going to talk about how it works. In female repro system, less complicated, less parts, huh? but it performs a lot more functions than the male one does. It's not. 
Okay? The fallopian tube is not, is, is not what's holding the ovary up. The ovary is being held up by this ligament here that is connected to the uterus. Why is this so? Because actually the fallopian tube, the head over here, can move around. Right? Let's say if a new egg is going to pop up from here, then this fallopian tube, like a vacuum cleaner, like over here. Okay? <laughs>
simple ones would be able to send a signal to the brain to tell the mom that the baby's out. But if the baby is removed via C-section, doesn't go through and stimulate all the signals, right? The mom may not know that the baby's out yet. At least the brain of the mom. Huh? So the mom knows, but the internally does not know. Yeah? So um, that is one of the things that will, will happen. I can't remember what's the outcome there for if you do C-section. Okay, but it really depends on, on which one is safer for the mom. C-section or uh, natural mom. Both are fine. But if I'm not wrong, C-section will carry do maximum three times. Okay? So you cannot just keep cutting, cutting, cutting up. Once is from the right or the left. Then the other time will be for the other side. Then one more time will be below. But you cannot do it more than three times. You make the mum's tummy area very structurally unsound for another one. Okay, so that's all. Intro to the uh, repo system. Our practical will be on the plant repo system. Remember green flowers. Okay, that's all for today. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you, class.